Hey, what's happening guys? Happy Labor Day to all you guys here in the U.S. And happy Sunday to all of you wherever you are. Um, today we're going to talk about keeping time without a real-time clock. Um, let me just say straight off the bat, they're cheap, they're easy to use. That's the best way to do it. But if you don't have one or you can't get one, I'm going to show you how you can do it using a library. And all you need to do is set the time. Say you're going to use an Uno or a Nano or a Mega, you know, something that doesn't have built-in Wi-Fi. You can set the time through the serial port. Now, if you're going to use uh, an 8266 or something, it's a lot easier. But we'll do that in a different video. This is just going to be for setting it up so that you can do the time on here. Now, the, the, uh, I'll show you when we go over to the computer how to get the, uh, the library and get it going. So let's get into our setup. Okay, we're set up. That's all there is to it. <laughs> um, no displays, no sensors. This is just going to be a really basic example and we'll output everything to the serial port. And that'll make it keep it kind of easy if you've never done something like this before. We're not going to add a bunch of extra stuff in. Once you see the commands and the variables that are being used, then um, you can add more stuff to it. So let's complete our setup. And the setup is complete. Now, the one thing I'm going to show you before we leave is our LED here is out. This is the power LED. That one right there that you can see above my finger, that's your um, 13, digital pin 13 LED. It is out. And that means that the Nano or Uno or whatever you're using, the Arduino in this case, is requesting a time sync. So let's hop over to the computer and see how that's done. Okay, here's our code. And this is directly from the time serial library. So if you go File, Examples, and come down here somewhere, where is she at? Time, and this is Time Serial. I haven't made any changes to it whatsoever. So you're going to need the Time Library .h. And if you don't have that, just go to your Library Manager. If I can get my mouse to work. And as soon as this loads up here, we'll be good to go. All right, and right here, just type time. And scroll on down. Just got to find it. Sorry. A lot of things use time. There we go. So we're using the Time Library by Michael Margolis. So just make sure you get that one. You know, select the current version and install it. I've already got it installed, so we can skip here. All right, you can see we have a couple of defines. The first one defines the time header as a capital T. And I'll show you what that's for in a minute. And then time request is the ASCII bell character. In our setup, we're going to set our serial speed 9600. And if you have a Leonardo, you need this line. Otherwise, you can forget about it. Uh, pin mode 13 for output. We're going to use the LED to let us know if we need a time sync. And then this call here, set sync provider request sync. It will call the sync function. And while we're waiting for it, it just prints out a little message to the serial port. So in the loop of our program, we say if serial is available, process the message. So it just waits for a message. And then it also says if time, time status does not equal not time set, then it displays the time. It's a little confusing. It seems kind of backwards to me, but it works. Now if time status does equal time set, it turns the LED on. If not, the LED is off and we wait a second. Now here is just the digital clock display. It just Prints, prints out the variables. Okay, so you see we have hour, minute, second, 
day, month, and year. Those are contained in the library, and you can use them in any of your programs. Now we have void print digits. This just looks for uh, if we need a leading zero if the number is less than 10. No big deal. So now we get to the, the meat of it. We're going to process the sync message. And we're going to create an unsigned variable on called PC time. And we're going to check it against this date here, January 1st, 2013. Now, we'll get into this in a minute because it can be a little bit confusing. So it's going to say, if serial find time header. So if in the message that you just sent it, it can find that capital letter T, then it is going to go on. And what it's going to do is it's going to say, if PC time, the variable we just created here, is greater than the default time, which is this time right here, then it will set time to PC time. So this just sets the latest time you sent it. And then we have our request sync thing here, and it just does a time request. Okay, so here's where I said it can get a little bit complicated. Remember I said about this date here? Now, if you roll up here, it says messages consist of the letter T followed by the 10-digit time as second since January 1st, 1970. Well, I assumed immediately that it wanted Unix time, which is kind of the, the standard. So what I did, so what I did is a search for Unix time, and one of these popped up here, UTC data, all this. I said, oh, okay, that's good. Current millis, I'll grab that. And it wouldn't work. And I did it like five times. I'm scratching my head. I'm scratching my head. It's, it's got to be right. It's got to be right. But then I went back to here, and I read everything again. Ten-digit time. So back over here, and I'm sitting here counting digits. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you know. Well, shit, there's 13 digits there. That ain't right. So what I had to do was find another one that had Epic and Unix timestamp conversion. And then we just got it right here. Current unit Epic's time, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Bang. That's it. So that worked. So now all we need to do is upload this and we'll be able to see it working. So let's do that. All right, so we're sending it, we're sending it, and done uploading. All right, so let's bring open the serial port here, and it says waiting for sync message. Okay, so let's jump over here to the epic time converter and we'll copy the current time back to our Arduino. Remember the T, paste, enter, and there you have it, the current time. So now you can use this with whatever program you want. Remember, all you, I said all you need to do is call these variables here hour, minute, second, day, month, and year. They are built in. They don't need to be declared. You're good to go. And now you have a, um, a timer, a clock, if you will, that you can use for your programs without having to have an RTC. Although I'm going to tell you straight up, having an RTC is the way to go and they're cheap. But like I said, I wanted to make this for guys who maybe didn't have one yet and still wanted some sort of clock function. Well, there it is, and it works pretty good. So I really hope you guys like this. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will catch you next time. Peace.